Hello, and welcome back to the OCO Roundtable podcast. From Oraro and Company Advocates, my name is Melanie Mwenda, and I'll be your host today. I have the pleasure of hosting Jacob Ocheng and Maurice Mbugwa, who are part of the Farms Data Protection team. Jacob is a partner in the Corporate and Commercial Practice Group. With over 12 years' experience, he has advised both local and international corporates on commercial contracts, corporate advisory, corporate restructuring, mergers and acquisition, privatizations, and infrastructure projects. Welcome, Jacob. Glad to be here. Maurice is a senior associate who is also in the firm's corporate and commercial practice group. He has advised both local and international corporates on M&As, private equity, privatizations, corporate restructuring, corporate advisory, and infrastructure projects. Welcome, Maurice. Thanks, Melanie. Also excited to be here. Throughout the series, we've had very insightful discussions on various data protection aspects, with our previous episode touching on data transfers and appropriate safeguards necessary in transferring personal data across jurisdictions. In today's episode, we will delve a little deeper into the topic of data breaches and how to mitigate them. In today's digital age, data breaches are becoming increasingly common and they can have very devastating effects on businesses and individuals alike. So joined by these two industry experts, we shall discuss data breaches in depth and share actionable insights and practical advice to help you stay ahead of the curve in data breach management. Our goal is to equip you with the knowledge and tools you need to protect your data and to respond effectively if a data breach occurs. In doing so, we will cover legal and regulatory considerations as well as various data breach response strategies. To begin with, Jacob, what is a data breach? Uh, Thank you for that question. Personal data breach is defined under the Data Protection Act as a breach of security that leads to accidental or unlawful destruction, loss, alteration, and authorized disclosure of or access to personal data transmitted or stored or otherwise processed. From this definition, you can see that it's too wide and is not only limited to loss of personal data. It also includes data breaches that arise as a result of both accidental or deliberate actions. From this definition of personal breach, you can decipher the following categories of data breaches. The first one is confidentiality breach. This occurs where there is an authorized or accidental disclosure or access to personal data. This is the, the most common type of data breach. The second one is availability breach. Uh, this occurs where there's an accidental or loss or destruction of personal data. Then the third one is integrity breach. This occurs where there's an authorized or accidental alteration or modification of personal data. A data breach may involve any or all of the above categories depending on the circumstance of every case. It's not uncommon to find either all the three breaches or at least one of these breaches. In relation to the causes of data breach, data breaches may be caused as a result of internal factors or external factors. External factors are generally referred to as intentional data breaches. This occurs when an individual's or an organization's systems are hacked by cyber attackers or by third parties for malicious purposes. This is typically done by external entities, as I've said. On the other hand, an intentional data breach, which is basically referred to as internal data breach, occurs where people within an organization accidentally or unintentionally leaks personal data to third parties or unauthorized persons. This could ar- arise as a result of either poor training, an oversight, or just lack of knowledge regarding good security practices that have been put in place by the organization. To bring it home, the examples of potential data breaches include email errors, example, where an email is sent to an incorrect email address, or secondly, where there's a loss of you know, an equipment such as a USB, laptop, or other personal device which contains personal data. Thirdly, where there's loss or misplacement of uh, hard copy files or papers containing personal data. Uh, fourthly, where there's you know, a phishing or hacking 
or any other external attack on organizations information system, IT systems and then lastly where there's an authorized access by a staff member to files containing personal health or sensitive information yeah, an example is where an HR personnel prints a payroll and leaves that payroll on the printer and other staff that do not necessarily need to have that kind of information find the printout on the printer. That would amount to a data breach. From this, it seems that a data breach may have huge repercussions to one's business or persona. Maurice, would you kindly elaborate on some of the implications or consequences that may arise from a data breach? The financial impact is undoubtedly one of the most immediate and hard-hitting consequences of a data breach. According to IBM's cost of data breach report for the year 2023, the average cost of a data breach reached an all-time high of up to 4.45 million US dollars. Based on on such figures, you can imagine how hard-hitting the financial impact of a breach may be to an organization. Such costs can include, you know, costs relating to compensating affected customers, setting up incident response efforts, investigating the breach, investment in new security measures, and legal fees, not to mention the hefty regulatory penalties and fines that can be imposed for non-compliance with applicable law. Now, a breach can also significantly impact companies' share price and valuation where details of the breach are leaked to the public. You know, a good illustration of this is a data breach by email service provider Yahoo. The breach was discovered in 2016 when the company was just about to be acquired by U.S. telecom company Verizon. And this led to Yahoo being acquired at a discounted rate of $4.48 billion, which was around $250 million less than the original price just as a result of the, you know, this breach coming to light. Another implication by data breach is the reputational risk that comes with it. The reputational damage resulting from a data breach can be devastating for a business. Research has shown that up to a third of customers in retail, finance, and healthcare will stop doing business with organizations that have been breached. Additionally, 85% will tell others about the experience while another 33.5% will take to social media to vent about their anger. This shows the impact of a data breach in our modern times, where news spreads so fast and have far-reaching effects on consumers based on the trust on our brand or the organization and how it takes care of its customers' personal data. Modern and innovative times ensure that news travels fast and incidents affecting organizations such as data breaches can become global news story almost instantly and overnight. This negative press coupled with loss in consumer trust can cause irreparable damage to the breached company, either to their brand or to the product that they're even dealing with. Now, there are also legal implications when it comes to data breaches. Under the Data Protection Act, a data controller or data processor bears the responsibility of demonstrating compliance, the principles and obligations provided for and that they have taken all the necessary steps to protect personal data held by the organization or entity. The Office of the Data Commissioner is mandated to enforce the the Data Protection Act, which includes taking measures such as imposing fines and issuing decisions regarding various complaints raised. Another implication of a data breach is the disruption of operations. Now, depending on the nature of a breach, the operations may be severely interrupted or even completely shut down until investigations are undertaken to us to understand the risk and the solution that may be implemented to handle the particular breach. This process can take days or even weeks to identify such vulnerabilities depending on the severity of the breach itself. And ultimately, it can have a huge knock-on effect on revenue of an organization or even its ability to recover depending on the industry that it arises from or rather the breach occurred. According to IBM's cost of data breach report 2023, the average time to identify and contain a data breach may take up to 277 days. You can imagine the damage that such disruption may do to an organization where its operations are not operating at optimum levels 
for almost six months in a year. Now, another implication is a loss of trust, which we have highlighted throughout the other implications that we've discussed. Now, an organization, product, or brand may suffer a loss of customers and market share. This may be as a result of the reputational impact of the data breach itself or the impact of the disruption of operations as a result of the breach. The effect is that a data subject will not feel safe to have their personal data with the organization. Now, with regards to data subjects, the harm to individuals as a result of a data breach can be physical, financial, emotional, or even reputational. A data breach can easily result in identity theft when sensitive information is exposed to unauthorized individuals. Hackers can use this information to steal a person's identity and commit fraudulent activities such as opening new accounts or making unauthorized purchases, which results to either financial or reputational damage or harm to the individuals. Data breaches may also result in unwanted marketing and spam email, humiliation and violation of a right to dignity and privacy, as well as loss of employment and business opportunities, depending on the extent of the identity theft or breach. This must mean businesses must be aware of such consequences, right? Exactly. Organizations need to fully grasp the far-reaching consequences that a data breach could have on their business if they want to mitigate such risks and defend against any future attacks. Such consequences affect businesses as data controllers or processors and the data subjects involved in a different manner. It is important to understand that data has become key in the operations of most businesses so as to ensure it remains in competitive positions against its competitors or even as may be required by regulations in the specific industries. Likewise, almost all our personal devices operate through processing of data through various means. Therefore, it's inevitable that the growing value of data also results in increased risks of data breaches. It is also important to be aware that hackers are continually finding new ways to circumvent the defenses and to gain access to valuable personal and corporate data and credentials. This just means that organizations need to continuously be aware of such risks in order to be able to mitigate them effectively. These are very practical pointers. Thank you for that, Maurice. Nevertheless, there are instances when breaches still take place. What then is the next step when one identifies a data breach? Thank you for that question. Whenever there's an incident in an organization, the first question the management needs to consider is whether there is a potential or there's any data breach as a result of that incident. Once they've identified that uh, there's personal data involved, the second question or thing that they need to consider is whether the data breach qualifies for notification under the Data Protection Act. Now, the Data Protection Act provides two requirements that you need to satisfy in determining whether this, the breach is notifiable because not all breaches are notifiable to the data commissioner. And therefore, this key requirements must be borne in mind. The first requirement is that there must be an authorized access to personal data by an authorized person. This is basically the confidentiality breach. As we'll notice from this requirement, the notification applies only to circumstances where there's a confidentiality breach. The reporting requirement does not seem to include other forms of breach such as integrity breach and availability breach. So therefore, you know, the management needs to consider whether, you know, there's a confidentiality breach. The second requirement is whether that breach has resulted in a real risk of harm to the data subject whose personal data has been subjected to the unauthorized access. Now, whereas the real risk of harm is not defined in the Data Protection Act, the Data Protection General Regulations provide guidance on the data breach that may result in a real risk of harm. Now, a uh, real risk of harm is deemed to occur when the data breach relates to certain kind of information. This includes the data subject's full name or identification number or any of the personal data of the data subject set out in the second schedule to the regulations. 
For instance, the net worth of the data subject or the credit worthiness of the data subject. So if such information is disclosed, then that breach would be deemed to have a real risk of harm to the data subject. Secondly, personal data relating to data subject's account would also be deemed to cause real risk of harm. This would include the data subject's account identifier, such as account name or account number, or password, security code, access code, response to security question, or biometric data. Such kind of data, if disclosed to third parties and authorized third parties, would be deemed to cause a real risk of harm to the data subject. So as you'll see, first of all, you need to consider whether there's an authorized disclosure to that personal data, and secondly, whether that disclosure causes real risk of harm. If you satisfy those two limbs, then you are required to notify that data breach to the data commissioner. If a data breach occurs in relation to personal data that's publicly available, there may be no need to notify the data commissioner in relation to such data, provided that that data is not made publicly available as a result of a breach. Now, once you've determined that the breach is notifiable, the third step is to make the notification to the Office of the Data Protection Commissioner and the affected subjects. The Data Protection Act requires a data controller to notify the Data Protection Commissioner within 72 hours of becoming aware of that data breach. This notification period is understandably very tight, especially if breach has occurred across a vast network of breaches and the devastating effects of unauthorized disclosure of personal data as we discussed by my colleague Morris. Of course, there are instances where it is practically impossible to notify the Office of the Data Protection Commissioner within 72 hours. In such instances, the data controller is supposed to notify within a practicable period of time, but he should accompany the notification with the reasons for the delay. In relation to the obligations of the data processor, the data processor is required to notify you know, the data controller of a data breach within 48 hours of becoming aware of such breach. The Data Protection Act does not prescribe the specific format for notification of a data breach. However, it outlines the information that is required to set out in, in the notification. This includes a description of the nature of the data breach, a description of the measures that the controller or the data processor intends to take or has taken, in order to address the data breach, a recommendation on the measures to be taken by the data subject to mitigate the adverse effects of the, you know, the data breach, and where applicable, the identity of the unauthorized person who may have accessed that data, and fifthly, the name and the contact details of the data protection officer where applicable, or any other contact person from whom more information can be obtained by the data subjects or the data commissioner. Then in terms of notification to the data subjects, uh, the timeline is not strictly defined under the Act, but the notification is supposed to be done within a reasonably practicable period. In the event that the data controller decides not to notify the data subject, they must provide reasons for this decision to the data commissioner. Of course, there are instances where the notification to the data subject is not mandatory, especially where the data controller and processor have implemented appropriate safeguards to ensure that that information is not available to third parties even where there's a compromise, for instance, where the data has been encrypted. Ideally, the goal of the data controller and processor is to put in place appropriate safeguards and measures in order to mitigate any consequences of a data breach. Therefore, what you're saying here in summary is that, uh, you know, whenever there's an incident within an organization that may have a likely impact on personal data, one of the things that the management needs to consider is to ensure that, you know, they find out where they, within a reasonable, practicable period of time, whether there's been, you know, a disclosure of personal data through that incident. And once they've identified there's a disclosure, the second step is to undertake an analysis to consider whether this data breach has resulted in a real risk of harm. And guidance is given in the regulations on what kind of data would amount to a real risk of harm. Once that is done, the next step is to ensure that they make appropriate disclosures to the data subjects and to the data commissioner. Are there any ways to manage the effects or consequences once a data breach occurs? Absolutely. In addition to recognizing 
at the occurrence of the data breach incident itself and determining whether or not a notification is required. The incident needs to be managed and appropriate steps taken in order to safeguard the data subject against further damage or further impact from the breach. A data controller or data processor should respond immediately so as to minimize the risk and impact of such a breach, either both to the organization and to the data subject. As such, a data controller or processor should have in place procedures that would allow it to act efficiently and effectively, some of which may include you know, procedures and measures such as one, the containment and recovery. Now, an investigator should be appointed who would assist with this. The investigator should establish who needs to be made aware of the breach and inform them of what they are expected to do so as to assist in the containment exercise. In all cases, the affected organization's data protection officer or just or rather any other person responsible for information governance within the organization should be informed and be aware of the breach and the exercise. They will take responsibility for one, notifying the key people within the organization, which might include the legal teams, the information and security leads, communications team, among others, as well as less with the data commissioner and the data subjects where appropriate. The investigator should also establish whether anything can be done to recover any losses and to limit the damage that has already been caused by the breach. Now, all attempts should be made to recover the information as it's not acceptable to rely on someone who has inadvertently received or found the information to destroy or return it. It may also be appropriate to consider informing the police depending on the nature of the information that has been lost. This may include, for instance, where financial information has been lost and has a potential for undertaking fraudulent activities, or where also identity theft has occurred. You know, where you can involve the police or possibly other investigators would also be a step towards containing such an impact of the data breach. Secondly, a risk assessment may also be undertaken. To understand the impact of a data breach, the extent of the potential damage, and also to agree on an appropriate course of action, it's very necessary to undertake an assessment of the immediate impact of the breach. This would include undertaking an assessment of the nature and sensitivity of the data affected, the affected section, devices, or server, the date and time the breach occurred, or even when the breach was discovered. This information will then assist in assessing the potential damage and coming up with appropriate remedial action, including whether or not to make the necessary notifications, as has just been previously discussed. Now, thirdly, Other measures that may be taken would involve measures that would assist in mitigating risks. Based on the findings of the assessment, a data controller or processor may then put together measures in place to mitigate the exposure from the data breach. This may include investing in IT infrastructure, implementing cybersecurity measures to safeguard the organization's system in place, as well as setting out security policies and procedures relating to your systems. Failure to have appropriate technical and organizational measures can result in serious financial consequences for an organization. In a more recent illustration of this financial risk, Absa Bank in Kenya had been ordered to pay by the High Court up to 1.5 billion Kenya shillings, which is approximately 15 million US dollars for a data leak. One may also consider obtaining cyber insurance, particularly if your business is heavily undertaken online. Lastly, one may consider measures in place regarding response, evaluation, and the review of a breach. It is important not only to investigate the causes of the breach, but also to evaluate the effectiveness of the proposed response to the breach. This is to ensure that similar incidences of breach do not occur again within the organization, or rather even where they occur, that they are handled in a very effective manner that minimizes the risk that we've just discussed. A full report should be prepared by the investigator, authorized by a service manager and lodged with the data protection officer or other persons who are 
responsible for information governance within the entity. All these procedures should also be contained in the data breach response plan. That's really interesting. What else should be contained in this data breach response plan? Typically, a data breach response plan should cover the following. One, provide for the identification and reporting of the data breach. This section of the response plan should ideally have a clear explanation of what constitutes a data breach, including any plausible or relevant examples that might highlight the risks identified during the privacy audit or assessment. This will assist other members of the organization to be able to identify a breach or even a potential breach that may arise or they may come across in undertaking their day-to-day operations. Secondly, the breach response plan should also establish a data breach response team. Now, the composition of this team will depend on the size and the needs of the particular organization. Now, the plan should also specifically and clearly define the roles and responsibilities of each team members. Additionally, these members should be adequately trained and given the relevant access and authority to carry out their specific roles. This will enable the team to be able to handle any potential or actual threat that occurs in future as they'll be able to guide and provide uh, you know, appropriate measures and actions to contain and manage the risks that may arise. Thirdly, it should also provide for investigation procedures. Now, this section should define the immediate action to be taken by the response team upon detecting a breach. And this may include actions such as isolating the affected systems or disabling compromise accounts or even remote wiping of data from laptops or specific devices. Now, another thing that should be included in a breach response plan is measures regarding notification and communication. The plan should essentially create protocols outlining how and when the communication process will be initiated, who will be responsible for this, and how approvals will be obtained before dissemination in accordance with the notification requirements discussed. Such protocols should also be in line with the notification requirements that are prescribed under the Data Protection Act. Another element of the breach response plan includes measures relating to mitigation and recovery. A key element of such a plan should be outlining the strategies to prevent future breaches, including enhancing cybersecurity controls, reviewing and updating access controls, revising security policies and procedures, and conducting additional security awareness training for employees in the organization. The recovery will entail developing a plan to restore affected systems and data integrity to minimize consequent and subsequent disruption to business operations. Lastly, the breach response plan should also include measures regarding the documentation and review of the incident itself. An organization should include the requirement to maintain information on all activities related to a data breach, which includes the type of the breach, the facts relating to the breach, its effects, remedial actions taken, investigation findings, communication logs, as well as the decisions made regarding the breach or how to handle the breach. This documentation recording such information will be used in evaluating how a data breach was handled and help in improving a data handling and breach management in the future. Finally, Jacob. Are there any measures that our listeners can consider or implement to ensure that these data breaches don't occur? Obviously, as we've discussed in this episode, data breaches can have severe consequences on organizations, including financial loss, reputational damage, and legal repercussions. Therefore, it's very important for an organization to be mindful of the potential breaches and put in place sufficient safeguards to avoid data breaches. These security measures may include encrypting data so that in the event of a breach, that data is not available to third parties. Secondly, an organization can consider enhancing their access control systems, for instance, implementing a multi-factor authentication, which adds you know, an extra layer of security by requiring users to provide multiple forms of verification before gaining access to the organization's data. 
Thirdly, it is very important for an organization to ensure continuous training to its employees on the principles of data protection as well as the potential vulnerabilities and how to recognize any threats and appropriately respond to those threats. Fourthly, it's important for organization also to ensure that they regularly undertake security audits and updates on their systems to ensure that any vulnerabilities are identified and appropriate response is designed and and implemented to respond to such vulnerabilities. As discussed by my colleague Maurice in this episode, it's very important for an organization also to ensure that it has a response plan that would set out the measures that organization need to implement in the event of a data breach. This will ensure that the organization minimizes the effects of a data breach in the event that it occurs. Thank you, Jacob and Morris. To our listeners, thank you for tuning in. Stay tuned for our next episodes where we'll continue discussing essential topics in data privacy. We value your feedback and thus, we encourage you to reach out to us on our social media channels using the hashtag OCO Roundtable. Until then, goodbye and take care.